The Wellness Revolution starts now. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Hotze, and welcome to the program today. We have a remarkable guest on that I'm going to interview, and this is a dentist, and her name is Dr. Blanche Gruby. Dr. Gruby practices dentistry in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and she was a disciple and a fellow practitioner with a very famous dentist by the name of Dr. Hal Huggins. And I I came in contact with Dr. Huggins' work through some lectures by some dentists I heard at functional medical conferences talking about how many diseases were caused by oral or lack of oral hygiene and, and uh, bacteria in the mouth and in root canals in particular and from, and from uh, dental amalgams. So I took a real interest in that because I have an interest in heart disease. And even though here at the Hotsey Health and Wellness Center, our goal is to help you obtain and maintain health and wellness naturally. And, you know, we use treatment of airborne and food allergies and yeast and uh, hormone replenishment and replacement of vitamins and minerals and nutrients and exercise to help people get on a path of health and wellness. But I've, I'm always concerned about our guests that have developing coronary artery disease with atherosclerosis. And when I became aware of this uh, relationship between the heart disease and the calcification in the arteries and the narrowing of the arteries and heart attacks mm-hmm. with, with uh, the problems caused by the infections that are carried by root canals uh, in the ligaments around the periodontal ligaments and with the dangers of the amalgam fillings, I decided to go deeper into that. And we're working now to try to help our guests here at the Hochi Health and Wellness Center improve their oral condition of their teeth and um, and of their uh, and of any fillings they have we want to get those out of their mouth and we want them to get through with the root canals and so I brought wanted to bring Dr. Blanche Gruby on so she could explain the underlying reason that root canals are dangerous and how they can cause systemic disease, as well as how dental amalgams can cause uh, systemic disease. So, Dr. Gruby, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me here. I, I love educating people and letting them know what the truth is all the time. So My let's passion. Well, let's, let's talk this. Tell us the story about Hal Huggins and how he discovered the dangers and the uh, serious infections that exist within tooth canals, which, by the way, most dentists deny, and they deny there's any problem with dental amalgams. As a matter of fact, I had a dentist who told me if he even talked about it, he was worried he'd lose his license. That is correct. Just that crazy. Is correct. So yeah, anyway, tell us about things. tell us about uh, dental uh, hygiene, oral hygiene, and its effect on systemic health, particularly in relation to root canals and dental amalgams. Well, I have to get a little bit more historical and talk about somebody who came way before Dr. Hal Huggins, and that would be Dr. Weston Price, because Dr. Price was the first one to take a root canal tooth from a patient of his who had just died of a heart attack. And before the patient was buried, he'd taken the tooth out that he had just done a a complete root canal on. Um, They had the funeral. And after the funeral, Weston Price took that tooth, ground up parts of it, and put it in the ear of a rabbit. And within 24 hours, the rabbit died of congestive heart failure. And he, being the true scientist that he was, he did it again. He took the tooth out, put it in the ear of another rabbit, and that rabbit died of a heart attack within 24 hours. And again, being the perfect scientist, he did it 200 times. And 200 rabbits died of a heart attack. And so he continued to study this. Um, He was very interested because the patient who had had the heart attack was his 16-year-old son. And he was either 16 or 19 years old. He was a young man. And he died of a heart attack after his father had done a root canal on him. 
So Weston Price continued studying, and what he discovered was that there were bacteria inside of a root canal tooth that could not be washed away, could not be antibiotic away, if you can use that expression, could not be sterilized, could not be maintained inside the body and be bacteria free. It was impossible to do. And when he began taking root canals out on other patients and putting them in the ears of rabbits, the rabbits would develop the disease that the patient had. So for instance, if the patient had severe rheumatoid arthritis, he'd take the root canal out, put it in the ear of the rabbit and the rabbit would develop rheumatoid arthritis. All of his research was very carefully put in a crate and stored away. And probably, I don't know how many years later, let's see, 1930 and about 1970, about 40 years later, someone came up to the home of Dr. Hal Huggins and knocked on the door. Dr. Huggins answered the door and said, may I help you? And that person said, yes. I had been instructed to pass this research on to somebody who would carry it further. And I heard a lecture that you gave on nutrition and I decided that you were that person. And he proceeded to dump really two large crates of research into Hal Huggins' home. Hal was busy at the time. He took that research and put it up in his attic and that's where it stayed for many, many years until he met Dr. Olympio Pinto in 1973. Dr. Olympio Pinto was at a conference in Mexico with Dr. Huggins. They became friends. Dr. Olympio Pinto opened up Hal's eyes to mercury and to root canals. Um, it was, that was the point at which Hal began to change and, and decided to, to research further the effects of mercury on the human body. Then he came back home and he realized, wait a minute, I have these two crates sitting up in my attic for who knows how many years. And when he opened up the crate and noticed that it was the actual work of Western Price, um, I can't imagine what he was feeling at that moment. I just, I just can't imagine what he was feeling at that moment. I met Dr. Huggins in 1992. I was taking a course, my very first course on mercury fillings. So we spent three days studying mercury, 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 and its effects on the whole body. On the fourth day, Dr. Huggins said, okay, your blood tests have all come back from Colorado Springs General Hospital. I'm going to show you your blood tests and show you how you, you guys are all sick. There were about 60 of us in the classroom. And he said, guys, because back then it was almost all men. I was the only woman in the class. And my blood chemistry went up on a huge overhead projector. And Hal looked at me and he said, Who's, is this your blood? I said, yes, it is. He said, well, how long have you had cancer? Excuse me? I had no idea I had cancer. I knew I'd been sick and I hadn't been feeling well for quite a, quite a few years. I said, how did, how did you see that? And he said, well, they circled it in red. And I looked at the, the screen and I see, yes, there's a big red circle. I said, well, it says 1% metablastic cells. Hmm. He said, well, you don't know much about leukemia, do you? I said, no, I don't. He said, well, he says you got 1% metablastic cells. Said, well, 1% is a low number. Is that, is that good or bad? He said, well, 1% you're sick, 2% you're in the hospital, and 3% you're dead. And then the next question was what shocked me. He looked at me straight in the face and said, just how many root canals do you have in your head? And I'm thinking, I just met this man. How can he possibly know I have root canals? And so I asked him that question. I said, how do you know I have root canals? He says, well, I haven't had too many patients in the last 40 years that did not, that had cancer and did not have a root canal. Now, listen carefully, that doesn't mean that everybody with a root canal has cancer, but almost everybody, I, I, I have to say almost only because I haven't met that person yet, everybody with cancer has a root canal or a cavitation in their head. Interesting. It's a very interesting, there's a correlation there. Nobody wants to talk about it, but there is a correlation there. 
So I got honest and I said to him, well, I have five root canals. Good, good, good. So you're going to have them taken out, aren't you? Excuse me? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm a dentist. I'm very proud of the fact that I'm a dentist. I have 32 teeth and I plan on going to my grave with 32 teeth. And Hal Huggins looked me straight in the face and said, yep, that's exactly what you're doing. Sooner rather than later. <laughs> and I sat there dumbfounded and I couldn't figure out if I had just been educated or insulted. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? And it took me a few months. Um, about four or five months later, I finally went into the Huggins Clinic. I had 18 mercury fillings removed. Holy man, I had a mouthful. I had 18 mercury fillings removed. I had five root canal teeth removed. My brain fog, which I didn't know I had, disappeared overnight. And I didn't know I had it until it disappeared. Once it disappeared, I went, wow, is this what it means to think clearly? This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. I was so excited. I went to the, the clinic the next day and I said, Dr. Huggins, I can't, I, I just, I am so excited. I got to tell you, I can read now a whole paragraph without going back to the beginning. My brain is so clear. I'm just feeling wonderful. I'm so excited. I'm going to spend the last two months of my life reading. And he looked at me and said, Blanche, that's kind of silly. I said, well, I don't know if the leukemia is going to go away or not. He said, well, I do. He said, the leukemia is going to go away and you're going to be just fine. And it took 21 times longer. The leukemia disappeared in three weeks, 21 days later. You've got to be kidding. No. And so I decided at that point that I needed to continue studying root canals and their effect on the body. I connected with a Dr. Boyd Haley. I don't know if you know him. He's one of the leading chemists in the United States. Um, he was Before the chairman you do of the that, let me ask you a question. Had you sure. seen a conventional uh, physician or an oncologist when you developed your leukemia? No. But you just had your blood work redone and it was in no more medical. There was effort. no need. When I left the clinic, I had no cancer. My blood chemistry came back perfect. Isn't that something? I still had a depressed white blood cell count. And I still had a mean corpuscular volume that was a little too high. It was 97. Right. You know, and those are, so those are two numbers that I look at all the time with every single patient that comes into my office. I'm sorry. You look at, you look at. Uh, I look at white blood cell count because everybody right. knows that white blood cell count goes up when you get an infection. Right. What they don't know is that your body can't maintain a high white blood cell count. And so when you have a chronic infection like a root canal, or cavitation, mostly root canals, your white blood cell count is high when the root canal is completed, and then it proceeds to drop. And so it goes below 5.0. And then before you know it, you're below 4.0. And now you're really in the dangerous zone of, of 3.2, 3.3. So you couple that, a very low white blood cell count, you couple that with a high mean corpuscular volume which means that your body is putting out immature cells. Now, why would the body put out immature cells? You know, doesn't the body want all the cells to go through spleen university, get their education? In, in medicine, we call that differentiation. The cells get smarter, they differentiate, and they shrink down to the perfect size that they're supposed to be. But when you have a chronic infection like a root canal or several root canals, the body just continually puts out more and more white blood cells. And those white blood cells are destroyed in a very short period of time. Eventually, what happens is the body then says, you know what? We're going to have to put out immature cells that we don't have time for them to graduate from Spleen University. Out they go. They may be just juniors or sophomores. They look good. They have no idea what they're doing, but we've got to put them out there. And that's those are the two numbers that I think are the most important of everything in a, in a blood chemistry is your white blood cell count and your mean corpuscular volume. You're putting out less cells and you're putting out immature cells. You're at the losing end of this battle. Fascinating. Needless to say, 28 years later, my white blood cell count is perfect. 5.5. 
and my mean corpuscular volume is 84. Yahoo! <laughs> Congratulations to you on that. <laughs> Thank you. So you were talking but about... I, you, you were, I, I had five teeth taken out. There you, you bet. Go. And five. Uh, so you were talking about Dr. Haley? Yes, Boy, Dr. Boyd Haley. Um, I, I met Dr. Boyd Haley at a lecture, and he was talking about enzyme degradation in the body. In other words, what kind of toxins and poisons are, are out there that destroy the enzymes that are so important for our, our very life functions? You know, within the Krebs cycle, we have so, so many important enzymes like creatinine kinase. And, you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of these, these enzymes that are really important. And so he was talking about enzyme degradation. And my brain was thinking root canals, root canals, root canals. And so after the lecture, I went up to him and I said, Dr. Haley, if I was to send you a root canal tooth that I extracted from a patient, do you think you could look at it and see if it was uh, uh, something that would destroy enzymes? And he's, yeah, sure, sure, go ahead, send me a tooth. So I went ahead and I sent him 38 teeth. He called me back two weeks later. He says, Blanche? I said, yeah, hi, hi, Dr. Haley, what's up? You need to get out of Scranton. I said, what, excuse me? You need to get out of Scranton. There's something in Scranton that is incredibly toxic because all 38 teeth were toxic. I said, really? He said, yes, as a matter of fact, we had to dilute the solution that we put the root canal teeth in because it was so toxic, we couldn't get it to work in our machine. So we diluted it and then we had to dilute it again and we had to dilute them three times. So that means they put the tooth in, in sterile distilled water and then took what they call an aliquot, which means a, a cup of CC right. of that. And then they diluted that CC in another large amount of sterile diluted water. And then they took one tenth of that and diluted it a third time before they could even put it through the machine. And once they did, they saw that the toxins that came out of that root canal destroyed all five of the most important enzymes needed for our day-to-day -day functioning. So very interesting. So I said to him, Dr. Dr. Haley, I would like to know, are all root canal teeth toxic? Or is it just my root canal teeth that were toxic? You know, I, I tended to believe, well, maybe it was just my teeth. Maybe there's some root canal teeth out there that are good. And so Dr. Haley agreed with me that there would be some sort of way for us to test, test it ahead of time. Because I don't, I don't want to take out a tooth unnecessarily, God forbid. I want to be able to test a tooth ahead of time, see if it's toxic. And if it's toxic, then convince the patient that they really should have it extracted. Right. So- Dr. Haley developed something called the Topaz 2 test. Please don't ask me what Topaz stands for. Um, it's, it's, I know it's a mnemonic. And we proceeded to tell dentists all over the United States and all over the world to send us samples of the fluid. This is called the crevicular fluid because it's in the crevice. This is the fluid that comes out between a root canal tooth and the gums. We would absorb some of that fluid, put it in a test tube, send it to the University of Kentucky, and then find out within a week or two if that fluid contained chemicals that were incredibly toxic and could destroy the body enzymes. 10 years later, Dr. Haley calls me up and says, Blanche, since this was your idea, I wanted to be, I wanted to let you be the first to know that we are closing the laboratory and we're not doing the test anymore. Why, Dr. Haley? This is an important test. Dentists need this for verification and justification for taking out a root canal tooth. He said, well, because we are a university. We're always looking for new research, for new materials. This is no longer new. We never got a tooth that was not toxic. I'll say that again. We never got a tooth that was non-toxic. There is no such thing as a non-toxic root canal. So I went back to Dr. Huggins. I said, well, why is it that there's no such thing as a non-toxic root canal? I love the way Dr. Huggins used to talk. He'd get kind of slow and pensive. And he'd say, well, 
The problem is once you take the tooth out and put it in the autoclave and sterilize it, it's real hard to put back into the mouth. <laughs> I just looked at him again. <laughs> he had such a dry sense of humor. He said, Blanche, she says, there is no way to sterilize a root canal tooth. And that's what dentists have patients believe they are doing. They say, we're going to, to drill a hole in the middle of the tooth, remove the nerve. That in itself is a lie because it's not one nerve. It's millions of nerves. We're going to remove the nerve. We're going to sterilize the tooth and then fill it and you'll be fine. That couldn't be any further from the truth. When a dentist does a root canal, they remove the main bundle of nerves in the middle of the tooth. They do absolutely nothing for the billions of lateral canals that are still filled with nerve tissue and with bacteria. They do nothing, absolutely nothing for that. And so when they seal up that tooth, you still have tons of bacteria living in the lateral canals of the tooth. Very interesting. So then what happens is as the tooth stays in the mouth, the bacteria eat up all the soft tissue that's in those millions of lateral canals. And when all of that tissue is eaten up, then the bacteria wait for food to come to them via the patient's diet. They eat the food that comes to them via the patient's diet. And then they do what we all do after they've eaten. They, they piss and poop. That's what we do. That's what they do. And it's the piss and poop that builds up in the in root canal systems. tooth right. that seeps out of the tooth and makes the patient sick. We're visiting right now with Dr. Blanche Gruby from Scranton, Pennsylvania. And we're going to be back to discuss more about root canals and amalgams and their adverse effect on human health. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back after this message. At Physicians Preference Pharmacy, we understand that the quality of your compounded medications directly affects the way you feel which is why we believe that your pharmacy should specialize in compounding medications while also delivering extraordinary hospitality and guest service. We believe that both patients and prescribers should accept nothing less than consistency and quality from their compounding pharmacy. This is why we've implemented some of the strictest quality standards in compounding, exceeding standard requirements, achieving PCAB accreditation which is the Pharmacy Compounding Accreditation Board, an organization that sets the highest standards in compounding pharmacy regarding the safety, cleanliness, and quality of your compounded prescriptions. Because of our commitment to complete health and wellness, we are dedicated to making your medications free of lactose, parabens, artificial sweeteners, and any unnecessary dyes, binders, or fillers present in many other medications, offering you the cleanest products possible. Information provided on this program is neither intended nor implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice and is not intended to replace the services of a physician, nor does it constitute a doctor-patient relationship. You should not use information from this radio program to diagnose or treat a health problem or disease without consulting with a qualified health care provider. If you have or suspect you have an urgent medical problem, promptly contact a professional health care provider or call 911. Dr. Hotze's Wellness Revolution advises you to always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified health provider prior to starting any new treatment or with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Any application of the recommendations from this program is at the listener's discretion.